Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, so today I want to talk about the uh, uh, second video about this uh, cyclotomic polynomial. And uh, so today I will give you one uh, one application of this cyclotomic uh, polynomial. If you haven't seen the previous one, that uh, you can check out my video list and also check out my uh, channel. So if you guys subscribe. Okay, so I recently find life is hard. I mean, um, probably life is always hard, but I just... So when I was young, I didn't, I didn't understand. Okay, uh, so our uh, application is that uh, basically we will prove that uh, other infinite uh, points congruent one, uh, sorry, one congruent n for any n greater or equal to two. Basically, simply speaking, there is an infinite point such that uh, such as x is one, x is prime, such as x is one mod n. Okay, uh, so this kind of proof, like basically, is a special case of the the Richardson theorem. So if you note some basic number and uh, and acting number theory, that you know there is a famous the Richardson theorem says that uh, if a n plus b has infinite primes, has infinite prime, if uh a and B are uh, confined to each other. Like so 16 plus 1, uh, 5n plus 1, 7, 17 plus n, uh, 17n plus 2, they're infinite price. And uh, the proof of n uh, to reach a theorem is very difficult. So you need he like heavy machine, right? So if you want to check out, you can check out my analytic number theory lecture. There is a three or three videos, very long. Basically, you need to like uh, define such kind of object called the uh, Dirichlet L function. And once you have this, then you start from this direction L function and uh, do like you do the analytic continuation and uh, do some expansion and uh, go some limits and uh, uh, deal with some uh, group t group representation in an abelian group, then you can prove it. Okay, but in order to prove like their infinite prime number one mod, uh, congruent n, then uh, you only need the cyclotomic polynomial. Okay, so uh, before we do this, let's introduce a uh, lemma. Uh, this lemma is very simple. So, uh, okay. So this lemma says that if you have prime, do not divide n, and uh, where m divides n, sorry, m divides n, and uh, but m and also but m is less than n, so it's proper. Then, uh, then your phi and x, and your x n minus one cannot have, cannot have the comma roots. In uh, in what in FP? Okay, so basically, you are simply speaking, or you can say in the integer. Okay, so basically, what I'm saying is that uh, if you have this property, then the the you you then these two cannot happen. So one is a m equals to one mod p, and the one is phi n a zero. Okay, so these two cannot happen. Cannot happen simultaneously. Okay. Okay, so the uh okay, so the proof oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, I should say in FP. Okay, basically it's this and then this is also linked to MAP. So this both these two cannot uh cannot simultaneously happen. Okay, so proof idea is very trivial, right? We know that the uh, x n minus one can be written as phi and x and uh, all the products m uh, divides n and m less than n, 5m of x. Okay, and uh, so obviously that uh, if there is a multiple roots, uh, sorry, if there is a roots for a, right? So then this, this guy will contain the factor of x minus a, and the, this guy will also contain the factor of x minus a. The reason is that, uh, the reason is that this x m minus one always can be written as 5mx times something, right? So if you have something here, and you always less than something, right? So you have, uh, you have, uh, if you have like a to the m equals to one in mod p, you can you can write this equation in mod p because all these are integer, uh, integer, co uh, integer uh, polynomial. So if you have a a to the m equals to one mod p, then the, this will be, it will sit inside, sit, sit inside everything here. Then this will contains the x minus a. Okay. 
Okay, but this means that uh, this x and minus one will can be written as f of x times x minus a squared. So it means that uh, your a n equals to one and the uh, ma p and uh, your di differentiation also ma p, right? You're, you have n a and minus one equals to one ma p. Uh, sorry, equals zero. Because c has multiple roots, so the derivative is zero. But at least but we know the p do not divide n because this is my our assumption. And uh, secondly, we uh, we also know that uh, p do not divide a. The reason is that my assumption is a to the m equals to one mod p. So this tell me that p do not divide a. But p is prime. So p do not divide a and p do not divide n. Then n a n minus one cannot be zero mod p. So it's contradiction. Okay. So uh, now we are going to prove. Uh, we are going to prove our results. Uh, this proof is tricky. So uh, okay. So zero, there are infinite prime equals to one mod n. Also, oh, proof idea is very simple. Suppose not. That means that I can find P1, P2 as a capital N, where all our, uh, everything are one mod N. Okay, so now I can consider, uh, I can consider uh, M, which is a, a number called, uh, basically you take a, a cyclotomic polynomial of order N and the plug uh, P1, P2 up to PN and the times some L and times some N. Okay, so we, uh, we will pick L to be uh, very, very large. Okay, so such that this guy is greater than one. Now this is doable, right? Because uh, this is, this phi N is always something star from X, uh, basically with some uh, orbital torsion function, right? So when X goes to infinity, then this guy must blows up. Okay, so I can always choose, I can always choose uh, L large enough, large enough such that this guy is uh, greater than one. Okay. And uh, okay, so now uh, okay, so one obvious thing is that uh, one is what's obvious thing is that uh, so m is right, so uh, m is either composite or prime, but however, right, m must there must be some prime number which divides m, either m itself. Okay, so there is uh, some prime. Let's call it p divides. Okay, but uh, we know that this polynomial must have some constant, right? But must have some constant. So this, this, uh, cyclotomic polynomial always has some constant, or right? plus or minus one, plus at p one, p two up to l n to some power k, where k from one and uh, maybe uh to the five n, and there are some plus or minus one coefficient. Okay, so this is it. So obviously that the uh, P1 do not divide M, right? Because P1 divides everything except for this one. So P1 do not divide M, P2 do not divide N, and uh, also P capital N do not divide N, and the capital small N do not divide M. So, so what? So uh, P1 do not divide M, P2 do not divide N, Pn do not divide n, and also small do not divide m, and uh, this n do not divide m. Okay, so uh, what this means? What is uh, this means something, right? So uh, okay, but but some but what? But my assumption is that p divides m, right? So we we have something like this. Okay, so now let's define let's one can one let's define a to be l n to the p one up to like p n, and the least equation basically so this, uh so we know that phi n a is zero, right? But uh, this imp implies that a to the n minus one is zero mod p, right? Because a n minus one now is uh now a n minus one can be written as Let's see, so x n minus one can be written as the product of phi of n x, 
right? So if you're working, if you work in a uh, mod P, then by my uh, by uh right, if you're working in the mod P, then you plug a minus one, you get phi and a. Okay. Then uh, by my uh if I let this guy right, this guy's a I say this guy's a right, then m equals to phi and a. And the m is divisible by p. Okay, so if I mark p, then the right hand side zero. This implies that a n e equals to one mark p. Because this guy is mark p. Because by definition, this guy is m. So m mark p is zero. So this proof that this tell you that left hand side a a to the m equals equals to one mark p. Uh, okay. Okay, so now, uh, now, uh, now there's a trick, right? The lemma. So due to our lemma, due to our lemma, right? We have a to m one mark p, and but we also have p do not divide n, right? So two to p do not divide n, and we have a to m mark p. So by our lemma, there's no right. There's no. Uh, no m divides n and uh, m less than n such that uh, a to the m equals to one mark p. Recall that our lemma tell you what our lemma tell you that uh, there's no uh, there's p to things to p do not divide n do not divide n. Then the, our lemma tell you, let's go back to our lemma and see, right? So our lemma tell you that the P do not divide N and the M less than this. Then phi and X and the X and minus one cannot have the comma roots, right? But now phi and A, ma P is already zero, right? So it cannot have the multiple roots. Means that A to the M equals to one, ma P cannot be, have, cannot have, right? But, but this means what? But by the formality theorem, right? This means that you start from A and go A square. You know, a cube. Uh, you all, when you touch a p minus one, right? You must be one, not a, not p. This is the Fermat little theorem. If you don't know how to prove this, uh, you should like go to my other videos or learn the group theory. Okay, so this tell you that since a equal, a equals one mod p, and the uh, no no further small m will make this guy equals one mod p. This immediately implies that uh, implies what? It must n is divide, it must divide p minus one. But this is the same as p is one mark n. Contradiction, right? Because p is one mark n, but p do not belongs to anything, right? Because every of these guys do not divide n, but p divides n. So if if we assume that there is a finite number of one mark n prime, then we will get the contradiction because we find another one. Okay, so this is like one application. Okay, so next video that I will prove the irreducibility of this cyclotomic polynomials. See you guys next video.